Hello, I'm Christine and welcome to my knitting room. If you're here today because you just got a new knitting machine, I am so happy for you. You are going to love it. What we're going to talk about today is the things that you can get to outfit your knitting machine, things that are going to be handy for you, things that are going to help you with your knitting, and most of these things that I'm going to talk about are things I would not do without. Now you don't have to have all of these things right from the start, but you will find them all helpful. Let's begin by talking about stands and where you're going to set up. Now for the most part, you can set up just about any machine on a nice solid dining room table or kitchen table. But if you're lucky enough that you have space to keep one permanently set up, you're going to want a good stand. So I was lucky enough when I got my brothers that I had one that had a factory made stand that came with it. Um, those are hard to find now, so you're gonna have to find something else that's really sturdy. Where I got really lucky was at the thrift store. At the thrift store, I found this nice computer desk for $20. It's solid wood. It's got a nice small lip that I can clamp just about anything to. And as a bonus, it has this nice keyboard tray where I can keep my manuals and anything else that I might want. A lot of people use the white plastic tables that you can commonly find at home goods stores or department stores. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a caution there though. Take a look closely before you buy. It's very important that you have clamps that are big enough to go around this wide table. This one is too wide for my machines. I can't clamp it onto there. Some of them have a, a rounded or rolled edge that the clamp will not clamp on flat to and so your machine runs the risk of wobbling and falling off and we certainly don't want that. So you just want to be careful about those white plastic tables. Some of them are also very lightweight. You can use them with your lighter plastic bed machines, but probably not with your heavy metal machines, especially if you're attaching a river. Several of my local friends have also made really nice little stands out of a collapsible portable sawhorse that they have found at a store called Harbor Freight, if you have any of those near you. They're very inexpensive and you can put a piece of solid bookshelf type wood across the top and bolt it on and you have a very nice sturdy stand that's also adjustable. So check that out too. So now let's talk about some of the things that I keep at my knitting table. We'll start here where I have my LK150 set up. One of the first things you're going to want to do is get some extra weights. The LK, if, you're, if you bought one and it was complete, came with three of these cast-on combs, and the cast-on combs have a little slot in them for you to put one of your extra weights in. You'll be surprised at how much weight you're going to need on your, on your knitting, especially if you're doing things like short rowing or a lot of transferring. You want a lot of weight to keep those stitches safely in their hooks and not dropping. So, as I said, you have three of these cast-on combs, however, the LK kit only comes with two of these. So, you're going to want to find a place where you can get some extra of these, and I would recommend at least, at least a half a dozen more. If you're working on something that's the length of your bed, you're going to use all three of your cast-on combs, and you're going to need extra weight. You also like to add extra weight to your edges as you are moving along in your knitting. It just really helps those edge stitches to knit off very nicely. You're also going to want to get some inexpensive little clothespins. These are for keeping your yarn ends out of the way so that they don't get caught up in your knitting. So when you cast on, you put a little clip on the edge of your yarn and it keeps that end of the yarn out of the way. You can get bags of these at the dollar store. Another kind of clip that I like, and it came in these cute, this cute little Beatrice Potter tin. These I got on Amazon, and they are actually meant for sewists, and it is a small plastic clip. This is a, a very little clip, but it has a very strong grip. So these are also good 
for clipping your, your yarn ends. And if you're doing color work and you're gonna have a lot of yarn ends, you're really gonna wanna keep those away, out of your way. The bonus with these is that they are also useful because they're small and because they grip so well. They're also useful for holding pieces together so when you're seaming pieces, like say you're making a cardigan, you can match up your seams really nice and clip them together to keep those edges right where you want them as you're sewing. These were very inexpensive on Amazon. Another thing I like to have at my knitting table are various containers to hold my tools that go with my knitting machine, pens, scissors. It's just handy to keep these things right where you want them. I recommend keeping a notebook nearby. Frequently you're going to be trying out different gauges with different yarns and you're going to want to make notes. So what your stitches per inch were, what your rows were, at what setting you had it. You want to keep careful notes so that when you are starting another project maybe a few months down the road using the same yarn, you don't want to have to start all over. So keep a notebook nearby and you'll always have that information handy. My little yogurt cup here is keeping my LK150 pushers. A small ruler, always good to have. Sometimes you want just a quick and dirty little measurement of how far you have knitted and that comes in handy. That doesn't substitute for doing a proper gauge swatch, but sometimes it's handy. Of course, always keep scissors nearby. You can get multi-packs of these for a dollar at the dollar store. Get several, keep them everywhere. And because they kind of tend to walk away from your workspace, you can even make a little bit of eye cord that you can tether it to your, your knitting post and your scissors will never walk away from your table. A friend of mine uh, also found at the dollar store some inexpensive little lightweight cat leashes and she actually leashes her scissors to her knitting machine. Great tip there, I think. Um, keep yourself an old credit card and cut it in this shape. What is this for? Well, if you're working with a garter bar or any other kind of work that requires you to have your latches all open, sometimes they're not, but you can easily just run this across and it opens up all your lashes, latches and then you're ready to go. Crochet hooks, keep a couple of crochet hooks nearby. These are very convenient for helping you pick up a drop stitch. We all hate drop stitches and they can be terribly hard to grab with your fingers sometimes. So keep a little crochet hook nearby. Reading glasses. Okay, even if you don't need reading glasses in real life for, for actual reading, keep reading glasses. These are also a dollar at the dollar store and they're darn cute. But sometimes you are looking in really close under your knitting and it's hard to see. So you have no idea how many times I have reached for my reading glasses. Um, a yarn bowl. This is a specific yarn bowl like you may have seen for hand knitters. It doesn't have to be one of these. Just any kind of heavy ceramic or glass bowl that you can keep your yarn cakes in as you're knitting so that they aren't rolling all over the table. Of course I have a pin cushion over here for my keeping my tapestry needles nearby. Get yourself dozens of these. They tend to walk away. Over here I have a can of hand knitting needles. There are times when I like to take the knitting off the machine and do a little hand finishing on them. So I keep various sizes around and particularly ribbing. I like to do my ribbing by hand so I will take a piece off and I will hand knit the ribbing. The other thing is I like this great big needle here because as you're knitting after a time your clamps can loosen up under your table. So I like to just stick the tip of my knitting needle in there and give it a little twist. 
it tightens it up much easier than you can do with your fingers. And you need to check those, especially if you're working on a machine with a river, because those can vibrate loose very easily, and the next thing you know, you've got a heavy machine with a river in your lap. Safety first, folks. Lights. Let's talk about lights. Adequate light is, of course, very important, no matter what kind of craft you're doing. I love these. Got them at the hardware store. They are telescoping and adjustable. And these are the kind that clamp to the table. These are not on a stand. Although those ones that are on a stand can certainly work too. But look for these. I think Ikea has them. I have found them at the hardware store and at the Home Depot type stores. What I really, really like about this is that as I'm working, if I do have a drop stitch or some complicated dark yarn and I need to fix an error, I can take this and I can put it right here under the machine and see exactly what I am doing. Very handy. Over here on my brother stand, I actually have two, one on each end. These are great lamps. On the other end of my knitting table here, I have a small food scale. This I also found on Amazon. I'm sure it was uh, maybe 12 to 15 dollars and this is a great addition to any knitting room and you, if you're wondering why because you are from time to time gonna wonder if you have enough yarn for any particular project and maybe you've got one without a ball band and you don't know what you can do with it or you you made something and you want to see if you have enough to make another so here's a hand knit washcloth I did and it weighs 33 grams. So is this ball big enough for another one? Ah, 31 grams. So kind of not quite. Although a washcloth I can certainly downsize a little. But the point is, is you want to know how much yarn something is going to take. Maybe you made a pair of mitts or a hat and you want to know if another yarn that you have is enough to do it. You're going to want to weigh it. Now the next thing that I think is a must for every knitter or crochet or any yarn artist is the ball winder and the yarn swift. I'm going to go on record and say that you should always, always, always rewind your yarn before you knit with it, especially in machine knitting. And the reason for that is because you want a nice tidy ball that you can easily knit from the end or the center, whichever you prefer and not have any tension from any kind of a knot that might be hiding inside. So rewinding is going to help you find those knots and you won't have a problem during your knitting. And trust me, you don't want that. Plus, if you're knitting with a gradient yarn, you may have experienced this already, where you're knitting happily along in your gradient and suddenly there's a yarn break from the manufacturer and they have just joined it willy-nilly wherever in the colorway and now you do not have your same nice gradient as you did before. So rewinding is going to help you find those kind of issues before you are halfway through a project. Now as far as winders go, I'm going to recommend that you don't go the cheap route on Amazon. I've gotten a couple different ones and they've been uh, gritty and not smooth and I've had to return them. So it's not that much more to get yourself a good stand wood. The nylon gears are really smooth and you will not have any problems with this winder. If you can find an old, older brother winder for a reasonable price, grab those. Those are good too and they don't make them anymore. The other thing that you're going to want is a yarn swift. So you might be wondering why I don't have this set up. It's because, as I mentioned before, this width of this table is very important. And this, unfortunately, will not clamp onto this table. So when I need to use my Swift, I have to go in my dining room. But you may be familiar with this. They have uh, nice wooden ones available. Those are a little expensive. Uh, I actually found this at the thrift store. Got lucky again. You need your Swift and your ball winder if you have bought yourself some nice hand knitting yarn that comes in a hank because it will make your life easier if you don't want to be winding for hours and hours and hours by hand.
So another kind of a ball that you're absolutely going to have to rewind are these. I'm not sure what the technical term is for it, but they're loose. They're very difficult to find the center. They flop all around if you try to knit from the end. So rewind this into a nice cake too. Any of these kind of skeins that technically are center pull, again, you don't want to be halfway through your project and find there's a knot or a ball and you have to stop and you've ruined your tension and all that other happy stuff. Rewind it. Especially this is a nice mohair type yarn. And that I am for sure going to rewind because uh, the mohair will tend to felt to itself. So you want to break that up and you do that by rewinding. Now, what you're going to sit on while you're knitting is very important, too. You will hear a lot of machine knitters complaining about how their back bothers them. And that's generally because you're either sitting too low or too high. So I went and got myself, again, on Amazon. This is a, a drummer's stool. It is completely adjustable in height, up and down. And better yet, it rolls back and forth. Now, why is that important? I'll show you. If I'm working on something that takes up the whole width of my bed and I am doing a project that requires hand manipulating all the way across or maybe I need to fix mistakes as I'm going or I just want to see better, I would have to, if I was sitting in a static chair, I'd have to lean way over or way over this way. And I found that it was really bothering my back bad to do that. So I love my rolly stool because if I do have something I got to do over here, I can just roll over and see it. No bending, stretching, no awkwardness. It's just nice and easy to roll back and forth to see what I'm knitting. Um, if you have carpeting, of course, that means it's a little more difficult to roll, but you can get one of those office mats that they make to put under chairs. Here are a couple of other things that I always keep nearby. Again, dollar store. This is a big plastic bin. I keep a clean plastic bin underneath my knitting machine. If I'm knitting a long scarf or something that's going to eventually hit the floor, I don't want it to hit the floor, so it goes into my nice bin. And the bonus being, it's excellent then for setting up some wool wash or a nice soak for the item that I just finished and want to block. And speaking of blocking, there are blocking mats that have nice marks on them, makes it real easy to lay out your project, but they do tend to be pretty expensive. So I went and got um, on Amazon, uh, you can find these at Target or Walmart too, uh, a, a kid's floor play mat set. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can configure these squares, they snap together real easy any way you like. So no matter what shape your project is, you can create a blocking mat that you can easily pin into. Your T-pins go into this grate. So the drawback is, of course, is it doesn't have nice neat lines, but I've never had a problem blocking things out just using rulers and a yardstick. So very convenient to have, very inexpensive. One of the very first knitting seminars I went to, the presenter said, you have to clean your machine between every single project. Well, that's easier said than done for most of us. And I found it was very easy to overlook that because I didn't want to drag my vacuum into this room. So then I was at a local club meeting and one of our members had one of these. It is a fuller brush mini. And this is a great little machine. This beats your average dust buster by a mile. It's not all that expensive. I chose this one because it came with all of these extra little accessories. So like a, a brush that you can attach and this is great for getting into those channels. It also has smaller tools. These are meant for computer keyboards, but you're gonna find that that is really useful for getting down deep into your bed. We're gonna do another whole video just on machine maintenance and cleaning. But meanwhile, get one of these little babies and you will always have it handy when you need, when you finish your project and you need to clean your machine. Do it, it makes a huge difference. 
There's a couple of other things that are real handy. You want to get yourself a bulletin board and put it up above your machine. It's great for holding your patterns, your little notes, your little inspirations. This is the lady. I don't know if you can see here. Well, she's kind of hiding, but that's the lady I got my machines from. This is my aunt. She was a wonderful crafter. And I have just little reminders and all kinds of other things. On my table, I have bins. Are the, can you ever have enough bins if you're a crafter? This one, I keep my waste yarn and ravel cord in, so it's always convenient. This is a bin just of weights. Remember I said you need a lot of weights? I've got a couple dozen in here. I always have them nearby. And then I have another bin over here just to corral my working yarn to keep it from flopping all over the place. So as you can see, there are a lot of commonly found items that you can use in your knitting space to make your knitting easier and more fun. If you're an experienced knitter and you have a tip or a tool that you would like to share, please feel free to drop us a line in the comments. I hope you enjoyed your visit today. Please like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Stay tuned for the next one.